Within weeks, the first aluminium castings are ready for machining. This 120 degree V6 block is turned upside down so that the crankshaft can be eased in. If you're not careful with it, it's going to hit the side of the block and could cause, you know, quite a bit of damage to it. So you have to be very careful whilst you're dropping it in. Because of Duckworth's obsession with structural strength, the engine is not easy to put together. And there are many tricks to learn. And they've got locating pins at the bottom as well. You've got to try to feel your way until they fit. After every race, each engine will have to be rebuilt. A year from now, Alan Eldridge will probably be able to do this blindfold. I think that's about it. Now, special blocks are temporarily fitted to the crankcase studs. The studs take short bars, which can be expanded with a spanner. This spreads the engine block by a few millimetres to allow the bearing cap to slip down and bear on the crankshaft. These bearings do two jobs. They hold the crankshaft, spinning up to 12,000 revolutions a minute, and they act as strong bridges or buttresses joining both sides of the engine block. Before the expandable bars are removed, the bearing caps are bolted down. The process of spreading the block is repeated for all four bearing caps. Now the pistons. Three in each bank of cylinders. A special cup helps Eldridge slip them into the bores. These pistons are made in Germany, but once the engine is proved, Cosworth will manufacture their own. The pistons are very special. Hollow galleries in the top, or the crown, circulate high-pressure oil. The oil will be injected as the piston descends in the ball. In effect, the pistons are oil-cooled. But this first drop of oil is just to help put the engine together. The crankshaft is turned. This is one of six big end bearings.
These are the bolts that failed on the old four-cylinder engine when the bearing seized. They will have to cope with hundreds of tons during a Grand Prix. These seals sit on the cylinder bores. In this engine, the bores, like gun barrels, are separate tubes known as liners. For simplicity, oil for the separate cylinder head is forced through external steel tubes. Cylinder head bolts are angled, a typical Cosworth answer to a tricky problem. The original reason why we angled our head bolts was to allow you to uh, have them go coming through the head and yet missing the cam shafts because the most convenient position is in the same line and that is what caused a lot of engines to have to be separated with the head bolts below and a separate cam carrier. Allied to that one, we then were looking at liner situations and the best way of making a head joint and liner. And I de devised a scheme of a, a liner which the head was nominally clamped on top of the liners and the liner split was fairly low down. But then the stiffness of the top of the liner and its support was not adequate. And therefore, the angle bolt puts in a component squeezing the two sides of the block together and therefore will tie and increase the stiffness at the top of the bore where the gas pressure is the highest. Weighing about 100 kilograms, the first engine is complete. But another, potentially more powerful engine is still proving difficult to finish.